Welcome to the Vibrant Living Network. Have you ever wondered what is possible beyond possible? What is the thing you've been wondering and inquiring about? Are you just feeling stuck and don't know why? Are you thinking or are you seeing? Seeing allows us to expand and have this other experience. We want to invite you for that wake-up call. We want to invite your spirit, your soul, so to be more alive, more connected. Glenn Brooks has been a life coach for over 33 years, author of Divorced to Patterns, Not Each Other, an explorer of what is possible. He has worked with people all around the world. Join us for a wake-up conversation, a dialogue with you. We will have some of the most interesting contributors. We will be talking to some of the most interesting people and have some of the most resourceful teachers, wisdom-filled people from around the world join us. Share your voice, ask the questions, become free of the known into a new world of possibility. We are going to talk about all the things you wonder about, how to live, how to heal, how to connect, how to love, how to be seen. Your life is precious. Enjoy it. That is such a big menu. I want to welcome you guys. I'm Glenn Brooks. It's wonderful being with you here in Vibrant Living. I want to ask you to exhale. Exhale three times. Exhale. As I do that, I'm putting my right hand on my chest. And uh, yesterday I had talked to a woman who actually just recovered from the virus, and I just I had to tell her that I loved her, and I was so happy. So I'm feeling that in my chest. So welcome to our program today. We're going to be exploring what's, what's life, what your life could be like beyond shock, when something rocks us, when something causes a crisis. So how to really begin to tap into that wisdom and awareness that's always there, that allows us to reset, feel our feet, feel our sense of happiness. And I'm honored to bring you people that, yes, I do consider people that, have, that I have a personal relationship with, that I, I speak to all during the week. And these are the people that bring more vibrancy and awareness because it, it is a relational thing. And as I said, I want to welcome Dr. Gail Randall. I call the anthropologist of real health and well-being. She's a, been a professor and a medical doctor. She's a, currently a medical doctor, been a professor. And as I say to people, my first meeting with, with Dr. Randall was Miracle Down by the Dumpster, where I opened my heart and soul. And, and I met her in a way that was so intimate and powerful in the most genuine way. And she's just a tremendous resource. So if she'll be on the panel today as a, one of our vibrant speakers on going beyond shock, which is the last thing Dr. Valerie Hunt said to me, scientist from UCLA. She said, Glenn, if you want to be well and stay well. I love Dr. Valerie Hunt so much. And she said, we must get beyond this, this shocking that happens to us in life. And she said that that's the beginning of real deep healing and wellness is that we believe the shock so we could be, begin our lives we can begin our lives anew and grow young, as Dr. Ashley Montague says, for anthropologist, that love can heal broken bones. So in that spirit, I want to explore with our amazing panel today. Dr. Stacey Finder, she's, uh, she's with us. Why well, don't uh, Gail, say something. I, meant to, I didn't mean to. I'm just excited about Stacey. Go ahead, say something. Initiate your wonderful voice. You want me to say something? Oh, well, I yeah, want to yeah, welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I want to welcome. Sweetheart. I love this this um, subject, actually, because it's something I use all the time with my patients, getting beyond the shock, and how to turn illness into a gift. And I'm I'm like a professional at it, personally, (laughs) because I've been through so much trauma and so so many things have happened to me, cancer, dysentery, lost my house, and many things that, you know, I I know how to do. It's a dance now, and I have it down. Is how to turn a disaster into a gift. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I'm ready. So, uh, Dr. Stacy Finer, Stacy, I got referred to. I want to thank Tony, Tony, who's a a film producer, and I just want to say he's been so so wonderful and uh, had the honor of meeting his wife. They call her uh, Remedy Jane, Dr. Jane. So. I feel like you've been a family member for a while, Stacey. I, our conversations and your your sharing with me has been significant over this last little while, and it goes much deeper than time. I want to wholeheartedly welcome you and say that I'm very interested in your insights, your experiences, and what you want to contribute to the world. And I, I'm just wholeheartedly moved by you 
and, and welcome your contribution to the conversation today and ongoing. And today's topic about going beyond shock, because I know that one of your missions is to help people reshape the world and go beyond the crypting beliefs and perceptions that are holding them back and holding them back in their family system, which is one of my great, great interests. So mm. deep welcome to you. Mm. Thank you, and a deep welcome back. I'm glad mm. to be here. <laughs> good, good, wonderful. Oh, God, Lisa LaRose, I want to say welcome to Lisa. Lisa's been an ongoing family member. Maybe it's been 19 years. Maybe it's been 100 years. It's been a, It's been something beyond time. And Lisa's caring, and her contribution is, is so significant. She's uh, one of our significant producers and deep family members. And I told Lisa we're going to call upon her today for all kinds of humor. So if anybody's stuck, well, she, you're our humor go-to today. I want to announce that to the public, Lisa. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, Paul. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, you're not just a woman of wonder. You're the woman of humor. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely working on that for sure. You know, right. every day, you know, can be an adventure, but if you can find the, the humor, you know, and uh, just take a deep breath, it, it can be, you know, transforming it to be pleasant and interesting, right? Yes. Well, Lisa, so this is Stacy. Sometimes when I am working with people, I say, listen, um, I'm going to be saying some tough things. If you don't like what I'm saying, just be humored by me. <laughs> 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 I might have been. I might have got kicked out of classrooms less if I said that. That was. That's a good. Uh, I'm going to use that, Stacey. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah. 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 Hey, Glenn. Just let me humor you. Over here. Oh my God! Wait a second. I want to. I want to introduce you guys. I want to introduce you guys to our LA and national vibrant living team member and writer, Ivana. I just want. I, I, you're such a sweetheart. Thanks for calling in, Ivana. Ivana is, is a bright light contributor. Thank you. You're going to hear more from Ivana, but I asked Ivana to call in. Thank you, Ivana. You want, you want to say something, Ivana? What's your, what's your message for today? What's a mini message you want to send to people? Oh, my goodness. You're putting me on the spot, Glenn. <laughs> I know. I just did that, didn't I? <laughs> it's okay. Well, I, 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 I come from the idea you're brilliant anyway, so what's that? Okay. Right. I, I hope I didn't jump in at the wrong time, first of all. I no. I called in. Um, there is no wrong everybody. time. <laughs> Have a beautiful day, you know, spread positivity okay. and just, okay. yeah, don't let the, don't let everything get you down. Down, sorry. Thank oh, my goodness. I'm on the spot. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, no, no, you're, you're, you're brilliant. Go and enjoy your roller skating. We're going to talk later. Appreciate you deeply, Ivana. Thank you. Okay, bye, Thank Glenn. you. Thank bye, you. Glenn. Bye. You're wonderful. Thank um, you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm just feeling so moved right now. I got to feel my feet so deeply. Everybody seems to like the the visual. I'm going to give that that imagery again today with the with the red ribbons, the, the three rings of red fire. I'm going to give that out. I know a lot of you guys like that one. Um, Stacy, were you mid sentence? That was that kind of. I can't, I was so happy that Ivana did that. I said, you, I, "Do you mind calling in today and saying hello?" And and. Uh, she just got to L.A., and all of a sudden she says, like, L.A. is such a different world now. So we're in a different world, Stacey, and you're, yeah. that's your expertise. I know. What's, what do you, what's your morning take? But as you introduce yourself, I'm going to choose uh, Sherry the dog missing. We're in this different world. So what is it like being in a different world for you? Like, what is it like being someone who actually yeah. works in this terrain anyway? Okay. Well, there are two different worlds. One is this show that I'm on with the four or five of you. That's a whole different world. This is my virgin voyage. So um, I'm delighted about this new world that you're welcome. All of you are welcoming me into, and I'm really chomping at the bit. Mm. Um, and uh, the new world, you know, that we're talking about, I think, in code, the the current coronavirus, the pandemic. Um, uh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Um, I, I have a couple of words I, that I like to, that I feel better about. Like, I know we're talking about social distancing, but it's really physical distancing. So I think we're already creating words that misrepresent our experience. So it's not yes. social distancing, it's physical distancing. Yes. And, um, you know, I don't think it's the necessarily the new normal. I think it's the new next. Um, and I don't know, just... I think there's it's a big topic we can talk about for the 
her the hour about how to help people or I don't know, guide people as you like to, as a word I've heard you use, mm-hmm. um, uh, through kind of the reality of what we're living in, but also to find um, their own way, a new way to kind of, mm-hmm. I think people are finding humanity in this. So one thing I'll just add just as a context is I've been introducing Please. the idea of the Maslow's hierarchy. Maslow's hierarchy, I think it was 1954-ish that he produced this idea of the drive, the, the um, needs that drive emotion. And there are five on this pyramid, there are five levels and it starts at the bottom. Basic needs are physiological needs. And uh, we first need to be able to feed ourselves and clothe ourselves and be warm um, and rest, physiological needs. Then when we get those needs met, we can go to the second level, which is safety needs, physical safety, emotional safety, economic security. Um, We get to the third uh, uh, level and we're looking at things like belonging. You know, we really are pack animals, right? We're social animals. So we... We need family and a sense of belonging. It's also a form of protection, but also emotional nourishment. Then when we have those needs met, we can go to the uh, fourth level, which is um, self-esteem. And we can now spend more time focusing on our purpose and our um, self-confidence. And then the fifth and the top is self-actualization. And this is when all of our needs are met and we can finally start thinking about the greater good because we're self-actualized. And interestingly enough, in this pandemic, we have our foot in the physio- physiological. I need to, you know, hoard toilet paper. That's where that comes from. And we have our foot in the far other side, which is the, um, which is we are human and we, we have this humanity and we're all in it together. And I've never seen this, this stretch that humans are in all the way in the physiological necessity needs and their foot in the human, in the capacity for humanity. It's exhausting. I mean, this is a huge, enormous stretch. I think it's a stretch that where we need to reconnect to humanity and our humanity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that was just a framework I thought maybe that I've been using that I think might help explain where people are in this situation panicked and generous well you know as you're speak as you're speaking we'll go to gail in a second and, and sherry right away quick comment that that one of my my close mentors patricia's son she would make these sounds she was a uh, if she give these talks about bridging the brain how that we had another part of the brain yet mm-hmm. to be awoken and that we would see things differently and I, as you as you're as you're speaking stacy i think to myself here yeah, there's this other opportunity here that we spoke about, and we're going to share with the audience, is that there's, a, there's, this, there's this wonderful beckoning or opportunity that through this, there's going to be this another whole level. And for many, many people, this will be an opening for them that some will describe as a spiritual awakening, some will describe as a whole, another way of, of feeling their full intelligence, their humanity. Mm-hmm. So this is there's an exciting moment in this, and there's something that that's here. And I notice it too. I notice it in the days. I said, this woman said, said to me this morning, she said, welcome home. It was like I was just going to a farmer's market. And I could feel there's an opportunity now, I feel, in people's spirit and how they use their language. It's almost like everybody's like that. The shock is the gift of like, oh, my God, we're human. And this thing could – this ain't no another – this ain't another, you know, what do you call it? Ter- this ain't another terminal normality day. That's ended. Mm-hmm. Right? Now we're here and it's, we got to wake up. Right? But, it's, but the gift of that, I'm excited to really build upon – with you today and the panel, and I love what you said. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm interested to push beyond the things that have held me back. I'm interested to be able to be there in a different way for people and not be petty enough to hold grievances. Mm-hmm. The ability to, you know, go beyond our grievances, which I respect mm-hmm. so much of your work as a, with family systems, because I realize that we, we kind of, we kind of, we kind of, we're born. And before we know, we got all these other these programs about how we're supposed to deal with things. This is who you are. This is who you're supposed to be. And I love what you're doing because I, I had a sense, and I want to put together conferences on, on intuitive family business retreats. I was always curious mm. how families can actually get together and actually have it be somewhat magnificent, not a burden, not terrible, not suicidal, mm-hmm. but really what's this other model 
of how we could actually be together and go beyond our programming, our programming and our distortions together. So when you shared yeah. with me that was part of your work, I was very excited. I am excited. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, All right, Sherry. Let, I, let, 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 me, let me let me let me let Sherry in because it's like getting everybody at the bar mitzvah table here, or as you would say, the wedding table. That's not the boring wedding table. Welcome, yeah, Sherry. Never Sherry Marquez. I love that line, by the way. Welcome, everyone. And Stacy, I'm very glad you're here. So welcome. Mm-hmm. Thank you. <laughs> I hope everybody's having a fabulous week. I'll say when I first got introduced to uh, Vibrant Living uh, podcast, one of the first ones I've listened to was yours, Sherry, and and also with with, uh, Gail was on it also, and of course, Glenn. Uh, But you were talking about exercising with taking your dog for a walk and watching their movements. And I first rolled my eyes and thought, oh, come on. I just walk my dog. <laughs> and then I listened. I listened uh, and I thought, of course, of course. These are all the things that I can do to make the walk. I, you know, I was going to just to, to to learn from my dog. <laughs> I loved it. And I, I really, That's I really so was, I was, uh, I loved that I was um, moved out of my silliness into, yeah, and a profound listening to you. So thank you. Well, I'm so happy that you you gave it a try. So, that's, yep. that's fabulous. Mm-hmm. You know, you you um, you know, you, you yeah. The tips were great. Thank you, thank you so much. You you more or less just like got into into the moment and focused on on the walk and focused on on your dog to mm-hmm. to see. Yep, and my the, yep. I love I love what Sherry what I love Sherry what, what Stacy just said. I love that I love how you allowed yourself to have a shift of perception and allow yourself to, to step into the the value and so I just love that. I love I love adults that do that. I love adults that like, you know, I came here, this seems totally stupid, you know what I'm getting value. Or I, I'm willing to see that again. I've always admired the people in the room that like they're willing to look silly, they're willing to be awkward. They're willing to the step in. So I, I got more value when you said it. It was like, okay, your 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 perception on me to see something different. Right? Wait, so I love that. I love that. Matter of fact, the principal play is. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, please, please. Mm-hmm. Well, I um, you know, I'm I spend, you know, all of my time working in the business space. I, the majority of my, my people, my clients that I coach, who I coach are business owners of private companies. Many of them are family businesses. Some of them are sole proprietors, some of their partnerships, but they're closely held and privately owned. And I mean, these people are, you know, they're producing widgets, they're generating revenue, they're employing people, they're paying Mm -hmm. the tax, you know, they're paying taxes for the tax base. I mean, they're keeping the economy vibrant and they don't spend a lot of time uh in this space uh i've been mm. slightly removed from you the the way that the five of you think and i am so excited to be back in the bosom of this uh awareness and this so when i when i was talking about the sherry's um description of or or invitation to walk with my dog in a new way i i know that i belong in that Mm. space and with that kind of thinking but i you have to suspend the reality of you know of life sometimes to enter in to that you know anyway it just i wasn't being glib i was just uh reminded how in my regular day to day, I'm not spending time thinking about how important it is to pay attention to the movement of my dog or of the person mm-hmm. sitting next to me or mm-hmm. the shift of energy in the room. Um, mm. And that's what that's what Sherry's uh, her conversation reminded me of. Mm-hmm. Well, that's that's beautiful that you um, you tried it and you got into into the flow. So thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad that you you got it. You you realized that you were 
out of your out of your monkey mind and and into the moment into the moment with your dog and seeing how much that the dog was is and oh you know just how much they they enjoy their their walks and just mm-hmm. being outside and 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 enjoying the present moment beautiful mm-hmm. <laughs> beautiful So I'm gonna I'm gonna give that. So this is the morning this is the morning imagery. I and you guys can listen to my conversation with Rachel Epstein to hear more about these imageries. But this one one inj- Im- imagery. By the way, I love the exchange, Justin. I love the exchange. One of my favorite books is called it's called Zen Mind Beginner's Mind. So in the mind of a beginner, all possible possibilities exist. But if you know it, so the opportunity, which is is such a physical opportunity. You know, to, the toilet paper people have sent us such a, what would you <laughs> to say, a blessing. They they reminded us, and you, you know, and uh, Stacy, uh, you know, when she went over the Maslow, it's like when you feel survival about toilet paper, it brings out more survival, right? When you really focus on survival, but when you exhale and you feel gratitude at the most basic level and you feel it, you know, if you if you put your hand on your heart, and to feel the sense of gratitude, just because we, now the more talk about the lungs, right, and breathing, you start to realize that every time we exhale and we massage our diaphragm, which goes all, you know, down our back and around our chest, that this is actually a miraculous thing to have happen. And you realize, oh, my God, there's other miracles walking by me. That's breathing, the breath of life. It makes you really stop for a moment and realize this is a miraculous thing, just that we breathe. And that we breathe together, or in Hawaiian they talk, they call it the Ohana. Last night, you know, you know, the last thing that Gail said to me last night, I'm going to share it publicly. I hope Gail will forgive me in advance. But Gail said to me, she goes, "Who's your healer?" And I realized in my heart, Gail has has such a profound impact in my heart that's beyond my mind. And I realized I just feel this ongoing gratitude with her that lights up my heart, and it's unexplainable. But immediately she she asked me, I just had the deepest gratitude. So. I wanted to invite you in the conversation. You're always in the conversation. You turning the horrendous, the, the disasters into gifts, and, and here we are. And I said to Lisa this morning, I said, no matter what, no matter what our take is, and no matter what your what your thought is about how this has happened, the delivery of how it's happened, it's a it's a disastrous delivery. It's way too much. As a matter of fact, anybody who's going past an hour a day of listening to the news, it ain't no news. It's yeah. rep, it's rep, repetitious intrudence. Gail, share with us your take as a as a healer, anthropologist, physician. And I, I'm loving the conversation. I'm loving the whole. I feel like my brain is saying yes to this so deeply, and my heart's singing. So I, yeah. I'm 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 ready for you, it. Please. You said it you said it earlier, but you know, because I've had. I think I gave you my most impassioned speech on this not not too long ago on the phone, but. Uh, so you know how I feel, but I that I feel that this crisis is actually a gift. I know there are many, and we're mourning them, and it's and that is very tough. But I I believe overall, this virus is causing us to go within. We're weeding out parts of us that don't really belong to us, behaviors, thought viruses, and this is a perfect opportunity because we're left with ourselves for the most part. So I woke up the other day and I I realized you know there's there's nothing really wrong with me there's nothing wrong with the core of me and I'm unlearning generations of harm but I'm remembering love more and more and I think that's what's happening to people one of the gifts as I said is is the time to go within to really meet our authentic selves our authentic soul purpose right now on this planet and to step into the 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 uncomparable opportunity that we've never had here before to literally change and step into the guardians of this planet that we're supposed to be. Look at the earth. The earth is changing so rapidly, way more rapidly than scientists ever thought. It's healing without us. The animals and plants and things are glowing. They're happy. They're singing to us. And they're waiting for us to see what we're going to do. And I think the plan is for us to 
learn enough about ourselves to become responsible planetary citizens mm-hmm. again and walk into our post as the guardians of this place we call Earth and um, make it a lasting thing and, and, and express the things that allow us to interface with the one mind that can take us and that is that place, our love, compassion, joy. And that, that's the things we're seeing coming out in people. As we you know, go to the grocery store, pass someone on the street from a distance, <laughs> you know, people are greeting us more than they ever have before. And you see the love in their eyes regardless of whether they have a mask on or not. Mm-hmm. So I believe that's what's happening, and I, I think it's our grand, greatest, divine opportunity. Beautiful. 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 And it is true, right? You can, you can see the, um, the, the, you can see that people are more awake um, just through their eyes, even though they're covered with a mask. There is more... Um, more eye communication mm-hmm. and more eye contact. I definitely right on, Sherry. That. Awareness. Mm-hmm. Right on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I feel like people aren't walking through the world oblivious. I mean, I mm-hmm. I have written a number and talked about, you know, people are asleep at the wheel. I mean, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, people are living in automatic pilot. They are, you know, I mean, and I what I feel like happening is people are um, – awakened their their reality is so fundamentally shaken um there's this need for everybody i mean i hear it a lot that people can't wait for it to go back to normal or and so i um i encourage people to think yeah i i can appreciate wanting to feel settled again the ambivalent or the ambiguousness of the unknown is um the, the, the disruption, the chaos feels so yes. forces us to feel so out of control. But if yes. we can pay attention to the things that are disrupted, that we're glad are disrupted, then we can mm-hmm. replace them with new things that are better. And when we go back to this quote new normal or homeostasis again, when we go back to a place of order, we leave the chaos and things seem to fall back into order. Or that we are we embody better habits, um, better patterns, newer ways of thinking. So, yeah. um, yeah. you know what, Steve? I mean, I think, never yeah. were in yeah. control. We never were in control. It's just more obvious now. <laughs> and if we go back to normal, quote unquote normal, we miss both. We miss things. All right. You like precious and joy and stay with us for our vibrant dialogue today. And I'm so happy you're alive and sharing this with us. Thank you for being with us. It's an honor. The Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. I'm Kathy Williams, host of Sexy Mom Abundant Life radio show on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific. On the show, we explore living abundantly in every area of your life. Ways to let go of limiting patterns and beliefs and to step into the flow of creativity and possibility, knowing you are supported by the universe. A social distancing tip. Putting distance between yourself and others is critical to slowing the spread of coronavirus. So here are ways to stay in contact without the physical contact part. Call, send a text, set up a video conference, post on social media, dedicate a song on the radio. If you have symptoms of fever, dry cough, and shortness of breath, call your health care provider before going to their office. For more info, visit coronavirus.gov. Let's all do our part, because we're all hashtag alone together. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Hello, I'm Glenn Brooks, listening to the Vibrant Living Network, having a vibrant dialogue, a conversation with you 
about how to deal with life's shock, but not just beyond the beyond this uh, crisis of the pandemic. It's really this way to bring ourselves to life. I love the distinction you made, Stacy, about it's not the so it's the physical distancing, but the intimacy is essential. So the intimacy is one of my greatest healers. So I think what's happening, one of the things I think people are feeling a particular pain about is that at the the social distancing that's contributed to isolation, fear, and overwhelm. And I'm curious to get your so that distinction between yes, we need a physical distance. But we need we need the closest. We need the, without the intimacy, there's a lot of people that are starving, and I and I and I feel like our opportunity is just to wink at them, smile at them. I kind of feel we have this. We could raise our social intelligence and our community reverence. What what for people listening to you? You just made that distinction about there's a difference between uh, social distancing and physical distancing. I'd love you to share more about that in terms of how people could use this this opportunity. Uh, thank you. And um, so, I mean, the first reason I mentioned this distinction is a little bit um, more about worrying, you know, seeing words get used in the public space that begins to shape our reality. And yes. we don't, all of a sudden we're using this term social distancing. Everybody's using it. It's not the right term. It's physical distancing. But, yeah. you know, uh, you know, but we will start to shape the reality based on the words we attach to our experience. So, yeah. you know, when I start a lot of times when I start presentations, I say, listen, you know, you know, I um, did you know, do you all know that the sun does not rise and the sun does not set? And, you know, half the audience is smirking at me because they know and half of the audience is kind of perplexed because they've forgotten. They forgot <laughs> the earth that the sun doesn't move. Um mm -hmm. The earth moves. So, you know, these things that shape our reality and, and pervert our thinking or contort our thinking or um, limit our thinking, that was the first reason I wanted to mention that it, that the terms matter. Mm -hmm. um, but in, with regard to how people are experiencing this, I mean, I think what, you know, with the face masks, I think that's a, a metaphor right for let's not talk let's listen let's not mm. talk let's look let's pay attention to let's lose one of our senses which is speaking because you can barely talk with that on but again it's the muffler it's the metaphor you were, were you when you lose one of your senses your other senses become more alive so you know uh i think what's the number i think it's 68 more americans are walking than ever before um, you know, 47% of the pollution in cities, in major cities, has been reduced because people are staying home and not driving. They're, you know, so, um, yeah. And I think what, what would matter to people a lot right now in terms of being, feeling socially isolated is to carry on better conversations with themselves. Um, Better conversation. Could you give, us, give, us, uh, give, give, give us an example. Give us. You're talking about our, our. Yeah, give us an example because a lot of people. I, I was talking to Sherry yesterday about this. That there's thinking. A lot of our thinking is all over the place, and then there's this. This other. Uh, we could, we call it, could call it a live thought. It's a. Uh, it's that sense when we start to say, "Oh my God, there's something inspired here." But a lot of our thinking is is it could really pull us down. So when you talk about gardening our 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 yeah. self conversation and being aware, I love an yeah. insight because. I mean, any given point, you can see people, their thinking or their conversation is, you know, it could be on this. this a, 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 I love what you said, by the way, because the first thing I learned from Maxwell Maltz, who wrote this book on self-image and psychology, he says, you know, when you go to the movie theater and they call a fire drill, it doesn't matter if there's a real fire. You're going to respond. There's, so the interpretation right now, fire, 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 is disastrous. We have the opportunity to pull back and change our interpretation and language something different. So what you're pointing to is so powerful. I want to make sure that people catch that. Languaging does matter. And the generation of the conversation, we are what we say. Yeah. Well, an example, I mean, there are, you know, there's thinking, there's people can ruminate. And they can get caught up in um, catastrophizing. 
um, there are there are impaired ways of thinking, and especially since we, in general, don't spend a lot of time um, thinking and reflecting on our lives and ourselves. We're in we're in go mode, and we're oftentimes very focused on the future and what's next. Um, you're right. We don't necessarily know how to quiet our minds to be reflective, to um, to consider uh, it, to do a review of our decisions, the impact that we've had on others, the impact that our choices have made on ourselves. And I think there are kind of three ways of you know three ways of thinking um, mm-hmm. that or three ideas that will help us think better and be better company to ourselves. One is Mm -hmm. to be aware, to increase awareness. And awareness is basically your ability to observe yourself in an environment and the impact Mm -hmm. that you have on the environment or on others. Then there's perspective. And perspective is when you are allowing, um, you are observing how the environment impacts you and being open to other people's perspectives and, um, you know, wrestling with some of those ideas and incorporating what feels like helpful and growthful and, you know, parting with or parking those things that seem to be contrary or difficult to digest or uh, integrate. Mm -hmm. And that leads to the kind of the activity of having options. Um, And options are where people you know, have more sensibility about what choices they're going to make and and what activity will flow from that. So I guess um, one way to think about helping people quiet themselves and think is to be aware, to be self-aware, to gain perspective, to observe the environment and how it's affecting you, and then to come together and make some thoughts, have some thoughts about what your options are and how you can take action and proceed and move in the world. Uh, I just want to give Sherry a plug here. So my, my, my teacher, his name is Ben. He was my, my Rottweiler. So the day, how my day started with Ben is Ben would come lick my forehead and he would let me know we're going to go take a walk. And when I realized when I let him guide the ship like that and we went to the woods, it was, it gave me the, it gave me, uh, Oh God, it gave me, um, it put an okay, it put a distance between me and my thinking. So I guess one of the great lessons that you're reminding me of that I that I practice is trying to realize thinking is thinking. It's just there, and if, to, to let it distract me from being aware of being able to observe my thinking. So there's this. So I think now the the again, and you talked about people, more people walking, that the pollution's going away. It's just if I had to change one thing about, and I guess we we are, is that the the, the focus on that as an optimistic path, the path that we're walking more, that our cities are less polluted, and there's more and more people. I guess I see it as a time of new intelligence. And if people could carve that into their day, you know, and how I do it is I I do my best to, to play with people. I do my best to ask someone a question, maybe that is a different question. And, and, and as my teacher, my teacher during the Depression said that any time he could get someone to walk, Paul Bragg, he said they would not jump out the window. They would keep on living so that actually walking and movement is such profound medicine that, um, so this changing of our brain. So one of the things I asked you, I said to you, I said, do you help people go not just to the next level of being regular or normal? Do you help people have another whole quality of, of health realization? Is that a significant part of what you do? And I was curious because a friend of mine called me, a friend, his name's Bill Pettit, he's a psychiatrist, and he, he told me the graduating professor at the school where he became a psychiatrist gave a talk called There's No Cure for Mental Illness. And there's no cure for mental illness. And Bill called me up, he says, Glenn, I finally have the book title of my book. I said, what is it? He goes, there's a cure for mental illness. So I said, i got to ask mm-hmm. Stacy about that. What's your comment about <laughs> gaining, gaining, new, gaining new health realization now, gaining it, not just surviving, but really what is that next level of health realization that people could have that, that you're about? Because a lot of people think, well, I can only get so far, and if I have enough medication, maybe I could get by. What's your, what's your, what was your definition? If you had to define, what would you say? 
<laughs> Wait, what are you asking me? I mean, I'm asking, I'm asking you, I'm asking you that if, if people weren't just functional, they weren't just. I guess what I'm asking you as a, let's call you a, a groundbreaker, a visionary in the field of mental health. What's your, what would be inspiring that you want to share with people so that they could go to a next level, another level of health, mental freedom, and emotional freedom, that you know, wow. as an example, in their family system, they never saw. Okay, you just, you know, you just pushed the button, right? I, I see. I see the bottom. It's, the, it's four Here inches. Comes. The right Here rib cage. Here it comes. Okay. Hold on. You just pushed okay. the button. You know, I'm All not right. in the business of inspiring. Exactly. I can't tell anybody that your book, I'm not going to inspire you, is coming out next month. <laughs> yes. I. <laughs> I'm not so I I I know yeah. that there's a bigger question uh about you know how how to help people grow and move beyond but I think yeah. it's more fun right now to talk about the button you push like I am not okay. I don't see myself as an an inspirer and I I spoke with with Gail about this uh, the other day yeah. um I think inspiring it is trying to inspire people is a false notion I mean uh, when 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 you inspire people, essentially what you're doing is getting them to agree with you. It's yeah. easy. I can say lots of things that are beautiful that you would agree with. Whether I believe with them or not, I could inspire you by just saying, that's not the business I'm in. I'm in the business of provoking people to think for themselves. <laughs> yeah. to, to, to wrestle, excuse me, to wrestle with their own ideas, to come to their own conclusions, with me or others as a catalyst to evolving thinking and feelings and to connecting experiences to a sense of personal identity and, and, you know, and, and efficacy, I guess. So I'm in, I believe my, my best use on the planet is to provoke people to think for them on, on, on issues, to think for themselves and then be there for them. Um, to spar, to, to, to develop, to refine, to to get validation. I mean, to evolve their inner world, their inner experiences, to something that allows them to see more clearly, or better, or beyond, and grow. So, see, um, yeah, I think that's absolutely amazing, and I I hate to tell you, but I find that inspiring. And I don't think inspiring. <laughs> all as, I do believe that people need examples. People need inspirational examples. You might call it provocative, but I think we're really talking about the same thing, but a different way, a different perspective. And they, people need it in as many different perspectives as we can serve it to them. So thank you for what you're doing. I love it. Oh, I, you're so you um so many things I want to say, Gail. But so the funny thing is. <laughs> Gail will not let me not be inspiring. She will not allow it. She's not and doing it. I, appre- and, I only and speak I the truth. I, you know, people I, know I, that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that because, of course, now you're, you, you are calling me to think about it differently. But what I will say is I think good – if I'm doing a good job provoking you to think for yourself, you inspire yourself. Well, the inspiration comes from oh, in oh. you. I just provoke you. It's okay. I love it both ways. I, I, <laughs> I like it. She's flexible. Too, Gail. Yeah, we're flexible. There's no one. There's no one right way. And when it's good, it doesn't matter what you call it. I, you know, some. It's funny. Um, this this makes me think of. Uh, I had a client once. Uh, who said she was too compassionate and it was getting in her getting her in trouble. And again, this is about language and, you know, physical distancing versus, you know, social distancing. It's about language yes. and those words we use. And we're so limited with our, our, our use of words. I mean, I have a dictionary and a thesaurus in my office when I have coaching sessions because the dictionary is so important to evolve, to help us put words to what we're feeling. Mm-hmm. And anyway, so she says, she says she's too compassionate, and I said it's impossible. That's like if being too, too compassionate. In- <laughs> it's 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 too, if you're too compassionate, it's something other than compassion. Compassion right. is a good thing, and it is always good. If you're mm-hmm. feeling too compassionate, let's find a different word for it. 
you're feeling taking advantage of. You feel you are giving beyond your the the the, 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 the your ability. You right. the, you're giving to the point of depletion or to the point of other people. I don't know whatever it is. It could be you know. But compassion is always good. So let's not use the good thing to describe what we're feeling when we're bad. Let's find a different word for it. Mm-hmm. So um, I don't know how this came about except provoking and inspiring. Yeah, oh, yeah, it, it, it's good. It's good. So it's okay. All the words work. All the mm-hmm. words work. You know, I, I just thought, Gail, I, thought, I want to get your take on this, Gail and Lisa and, and Sherry. If, in fact, the languaging, the languaging change and we're not supposed to socially distance. We're supposed to be a student physically distance. That that one interpretation might actually impact people so significantly that this constant messaging Correct. about social distance. Oh my God, I love that. We got to get that out there Correct. on the New York Times. Stop social distancing. Physically distance, but Correct. be in community. Okay, beautiful. Yeah. Correct. I think the people are is, is warping. Up, is warping. Yeah, and they're you know they're FaceTiming more. I did a you know, Zoom Easter with my kids and granddaughters, and, you know, people are figuring that out, but they they need to hear it more. You know, that doesn't mean you have to stay in isolation. It just means you have to stay physically away from each other. Listen, you know, my father once said to me, don't, when, when he hated when we would go to a restaurant, he would go to a restaurant, and the person, the host would say, are you alone? And my father would say, no, 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 I'm I'm by myself. <laughs> I love it. That's a distinction. Yeah. These right. are very these are fundamental distinctions. I don't think we're isolating. If you're alone, why are you isolating? Have good thoughts. Read, yeah. write, talk to a tree. When I was I think I was 12 years old, I swore I said fuck to my mom or something, and she told me to go out to the backyard and say that word. Set, you know, for say that shout at the tree for 10 minutes saying that word. <laughs> Poor tree. <laughs> <laughs> poor tree. Yeah, you're right. But no, the poor tree. They, I was a child to them. They absorbed it. They absorbed it. You know <laughs> about 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 language. I want to I want to run this by all of you. So I took a walk with a, a listener, and she said to me something that was so profound. She said, "You know, Glenn, I'm not able to sleep." And I said, "What do you mean?" She goes, "I just been able to sleep." So I I went to the, I know the doctor. She went to a, a a doctor who's considered to be an integrated doctor. She says, "I went to Charles." And she says, I give, don't let me leave the office without giving me a sleep medication. And she called me the next week. She goes, she had the most powerful insight. She goes, Glenn, I went back and saw Charles again. And she goes, this time I went and I said, look, don't treat me based on my my disaster. Don't treat me based on, on me being deficient and, and overwhelmed by the problem. Please treat me based on your wisdom. He gave her, some, he gave her a different mm-hmm. protocol right. and she, he took the medication away. And I thought it was mm-hmm. brilliant. This idea of like, okay, when you go to see you or Gail, let's say, what's the standard here? If you guys just drop to that level of low functioning, or this, or you could call it a dis at ease, wow! But but when you have that model and you and you speak from your own experience, that's such a gift. That you're practicing physician heal thyself as as you're with them. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I keep wanting to go to Lisa because I told I told. I, I told Lisa she would be the, the great humor uh, balancer today. Lisa, what did you want to yeah, – since you're – you, <laughs> What's that, Gail? What's that, Gail? Comedy break. A humor break. Well, I, I, you know, I, I, well, you know, I, well, I wanted to – it wasn't a humor break. I just wanted to, to share. Please. Now, I, now I've, I've in this t- quiet time, I've been able to reconnect with friends and – individuals that have been too busy in their lives to to make time for a phone mm-hmm. call. And the one gentleman that I haven't talked to in probably 10 years, which is awful, uh, he said, you know, because he's in, in professional sports and he's always, he said, you know, this is the first time in mm-hmm. so long I've been able to sit by the fire and be mm-hmm. with my dog and be with myself mm-hmm. and figure out what it is that I want because I'm not having mm-hmm. to answer phone calls from coaches and parents and, mm-hmm. you know, different people, and I'm able to decide mm-hmm. what it is I want for myself. And he said, I may not go back to work. He said, I'm really mm-hmm. 
enjoying this time to really nurture and get to know myself again because I've gotten so far away from it. And and I think that that's mm-hmm. really a big part of the gift and the blessing in there for each of us. We're asking ourselves what is really important to me, what matters to me. And whether it be, you know, the right food or the right toilet paper or whatever it is, you know, <laughs> and so there, there's your humor, Glenn. <laughs> Thank you. Able to buy you did it. You did it. You did awesome. it. Mm-hmm. So I would ask um, each one of you, what are you doing for yourself, you know, to reconnect with yourself during this time? Gail? Well, I've been writing a book. I've actually finished it, and, and that, of course, is um, – extremely healing for me and it's because it's for healing other people so it's healing for everybody and uh, that's been occupying most of my time but I've also been you know exercising walking um, and meditating I live by the ocean so it's very easy for me to look out and see the earth change and and watch it come alive and sparkle and Mm -hmm. the birds the animals are coming much closer, I noticed, too, mm. although they always come mm. closer. But um, animals you wouldn't normally see that close are coming really close, you know, like storks are flying right overhead. And I have a hawk that always comes, but that's not different. So it's just beautiful to, and I believe it's through interfacing with the one mind, that they're in it with us. The animals and plants and things, they know, you know, and they're feeling it. The whales are coming closer. The dolphins are, wow. are, you know, amazing. They're flying through the air, doing the flying trick. So that's mm-hmm. what I'm doing. But I, I now have gone back to the office. We're doing no-face consultations, teleconferencing, and, you know, wearing my masks and gloves to work. But we're an essential service, so... We're back in business. We had to close down for two weeks because one of my nurses got the virus. So we had to put mm, everything. Mm, mm. Yeah, but she's fine now. and I've, She's feeling better? Uh, I've helped cure about 10 people now. Mm. So I'm going to write a paper on it. Cause I, don't, I think I'm one of the few integrative, you know, mm. natural doctors that's had that much experience. And I can actually speak from my experience as to what what I've seen and what works. So I'm going to uh, get that out there for people to see so they can feel more comfortable. That's incredible. Oh, Thank my God. We have 30, 30. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, just, I, I see, see you. There... so much about this. Yeah, sorry, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go, go right ahead. Just so much about this time is bringing forward I mean, listen, the dominant culture <laughs> is disrupted. Uh, and new ways of thinking this, I, I call this there. So it's a little bit, I, I, it's not so spiritual or, but the way I'm, I, the way I'm experiencing this is that there's this, you know, there's this hierarchy and the hierarchy has been a very small little 1% or whatever the percentage is of wealth, mm-hmm. people who hold the wealth and, and hold the cards yes. and make the decisions. And then there's this uh, group of bottom feeders. Who are uh, who are above the the silent majority? There is a silent majority in this in this culture, right above, right below the bottom feeders. And the bottom feeders are this very wealthy, uh, financially uh, group benefiting from the super affluent, and there mm-hmm. that's the glass ceiling. Essentially, that's the glass ceiling is this group of people who are protecting um, their their opportunity to collect the crumbs from the super affluent. And then you have this, the rest of us who are, you know, bust and hump every day with good intention and, and good spirits and, 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 you know, trying to find purpose in life and trying to create meaning for our families and trying to give our families experiences about how beautiful it is to be on the planet. And, we have a belief system that we have not been able to come together to talk about, which is what I think vibrant living talks about. It vibrant living, I think I'm just getting introduced to it, but it is, it does represent this collective wisdom that mainstream America has not 
has not been allowed to experience or talk about. If, the, if we could bring vibrant living closer, in to, at least into my world, um, yes. to give exposure uh, to, to actually, it's really permission to to give my my this group of middle managers or you know privately owned companies who are bust and hump and and burdened yes. by the banking institutions and burdened by the financial institutions and burdened by all this regulation that is put in place because of mistakes of the super powerful and now burdening all of these people who are creating opportunities and the tax base and the jobs and the employment for communities to thrive, if we could give them breathe life into that silent majority, I think we would really be, this would be a very powerful uh, conversation for reshaping the country, the planet. Um, yes, ma'am. In in <laughs> reshaping it. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, th- thank you, Stacy. Thank you, Gail, Lisa, uh, Sherry. You guys, we're in the, we are we are we are one mind, and we can become more intelligent, and loving, and caring together. I thank you, Stacy. I love that. Your life's precious. Enjoy it. I'm Glenn Brooks. We'll be with you next time. Much love to you guys. Take good care of each other. Thanks, guys. Love you. Bye. All the best. Thank Bye. You. Be well, all. Stay safe.